Hi everyone. Um, I'm Anthony Gordon uh, with the G as uh, CHO Program Manager. Um, I'll explain what CHO is later on, uh, but that's essentially the job title. Um, so I started uh, with the G about a month and a half ago. So obviously, if I, I refer to my notes, you can please excuse me for that one. Um, well, I previously worked for Siemens for 12 years, so I um, kind of crossed over from Siemens to G uh, very recently uh, after working in various sectors, including the wind industry. Um, so I believe it's been obviously mentioned a couple of times by the guys, but uh, our kind of biggest innovation at the moment is the world's largest uh, turbine that's available uh, commercially, uh, which is the Holiday X 12 megawatt machine. Um, so to, to kind of get the, the idea that it's a 220 meter rotor with each blade being 107 meters long. And um, we're looking with one turbine to power 16,000 homes. Um, that's kind of the level we're at with it. And then, um, so the size scale there, just putting something in the perspective of how tall it is. Um, obviously not quite as tall as the Alpha Tower in the Chrysler building, but not far off, just to give an idea of the lots of buildings and I think you might have seen and visited. Um, so with this uh, platform, we obviously have a six megawatt machine in the um, field at the moment, which this was the, the next evolution. So we went straight from six megawatt machine to 12. Um, and that's kind of building on the components and technology that we had within the six megawatt and kind of innovating it up to the next stage to allow kind of this size of machine to be built. And then, yeah, so kind of, this is GE's global presence at the moment from a, a wind farm perspective, what we have installed uh, under construction and consent is for um, first bidder status. Um, so currently we have the only operational um, wind farm in the US, and that's obviously due to change with other OEMs and ourselves. Um, Having further projects selected <laughs> with Forstead, um, which is Skipjack and Ocean Wind. Uh, we also have one uh, wind farm in China. And then our European uh, presence, we obviously have uh, six megawatt machines in Mercure and a, a few other kind of test sites there. Um, and also, which is due to be constructed uh, next year, uh, Saint Nazaire, up in France, uh, which is the the last six megawatt project we do before operation switches fully to the 12 megawatt machine. Um, and from a UK perspective, uh, we've been given preferred bidder uh, status on the Tata Bank project for the full 3.6 megawatt. Um, so, which I believe is the largest wind farm, offshore wind farm, sorry, um, in the, the world. Um, and then currently we've installed one of the 12 megawatt machines in Rotterdam as our test machine. And kind of that's the <coughs> an onshore turbine we can access for that purpose to uh, improve the technology and, and have that access. Uh, yeah, so the state short program, which obviously I'm looking after uh, for GE, um, and the whole idea behind the program is obviously that to kind of, as it says, keep people on shore, let's not go offshore as much and, and reduce that down. Um, so we're looking at that through validation of components. Um, this is through the, the testing and kind of undertaking them in uh, accelerated lifetime testing conditions and um, kind of giving us that more data and information behind what's going on with these components and what have you. Um, kind of a, a big focus is digital size. So that's obviously what can we learn from digital twins um, and life models and the data that we have from that to again, we're reviewing everything on shore. Let's stop the people going off for. Um, then that obviously feeds into our one m strategy. Um, obviously, every OEM has that strategy in place to have way of service and look after the turbines, but it's again give more data behind that and kind of more intelligent decisions about what we're doing. Um, and then a big area again is to um, robotics. So, a lot of repetitive tasks, so as you mentioned, the bolts, you have effectively someone goes out and tightens those bolts each time. And um, so, obviously, a very kind of repetitive task, heavy uh, duty. Uh, for a person to undertake, so it's kind of robots to take away from that, take away the risk and, and kind of the issues around that, and also any confined space work that we have, and um, let's take away the, the risk to human beings for that and use robots where we can. Um, and obviously, the outcome for this is looking to um, increase revenue because the, the terminals are producing more energy, uh, reduce the, the cost to, to an OEM and a uh, wind farm operator. And it reduces the risk around this, so it, it's obviously quite risky going offshore to reduce that down as far as possible. Um, so, yeah, so I'm uh, embedded in the RF facility in Blythe, is um, my base location. 
and we do obviously a lot of work alongside the, the catapult for our um, the cell and um, data testing. So we have uh, one or seven data which is in the facility in Biden at the moment and we're testing. Um, and again, this is kind of full lifetime testing pre fatigue load and um, post fatigue load. Uh, we then have obviously our cell test. Um, the third pitch along there is the machine head that's used, and that's our six megawatt machine being uh, tested. So it'd be a similar setup for our 12 megawatts <coughs> to one megawatt that accelerated testing. So obviously, these the machines are potentially in the field for 25 years plus. So it gives us the opportunity to test them uh, over a shorter period to give us what does it look like in year 25. Um, so that's the idea behind this. And um, we also have a uh, pitch bearing test. And again, this is like state testing to see what that happens with that and um, what could have happened. Uh, yeah, so again, um, I'm working on the R&D side rather than testing. Um, so kind of we have three pillars that we're, we're looking at. Um, we're undertaking R&D project with the catapult, um, and that's mainly focusing on the digital twin element of um, subcomponents. And as I mentioned, give us that data-driven approach and uh, improve our decision making. Uh, we then have the industrial cap collaboration, uh, utilizing the knowledge transfer network. We've recently uh, closed actually uh, two robotics challenges, where again aligning to the program's uh, outcomes and aims, where we're looking for uh, related tasks of um, sending robots out to inspect and repair blades, as well as uh, on the machine around <coughs> the generator, we have some uh, bolts that require inspect and potentially tightening. So again, that's accessed by guys on ropes at the moment. So to take away the rope access risk, can we use a robot to utilize that? Um, so that's an ongoing process at the moment that we're, we're doing, but it's the first time we've done this in the UK. So very much kind of new to GE and myself, um, but it's kind of progressing and working well at the moment, we're seeing. And then as Pete mentioned, Echo Bolt. Um, so this is obviously after discussion with Catapult and the introduction, it was seen as having value to um, G's kind of strategy and where the project sponsor and uh, having access to that operational survey um, in the field. Uh, and then working with the Catapult and um, the research hubs that uh, was mentioned, uh, we're looking to become an industrial sponsor for the poetry and research hub with the University of Sheffield and Warwick and utilizing their experience and knowledge uh, to obviously help us as well. Uh, how we are going. Uh, and that was everything for me. And uh, obviously, I've mentioned the, the 12 megawatts and kind of the size. Well, that's just to give an idea of the scale of, of this thing, um, where we kind of are with that. Um, so, I think uh, the Nacelgia is approximately the size, I think, of my house. So, um, <laughs> it's uh, obviously just to give that scale with folks that turbine and rocket arm and power 170 like right there. So, that's all for me. Thank you.